Good evening, Radiant Life Church in the parking lot. Yes. Yes. It's been 22 weeks, I think 21 weeks, something like that, since we've gathered like this in person. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, maybe you didn't register for the event and you're watching at home where it's nice and cool. Thanks for joining us on the live stream as well. Hey, I want to encourage you guys because I haven't been able to do this in 21 weeks. Would you stand? Would you stand with me?
Boost. Go ahead and take that. Boost. This one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. All right. Hey, guys, you go, go ahead and take a seat. Can I get a worship team member? Is there a black stool or tall top right there? Can I have it? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Wow, silent crowd, rough crowd tonight. Jiminy, you're finally back in some sort of gathering, and I got crickets out there. It's been hard enough for 21 weeks preaching to this camera and no one out in the crowd. Just saying, if you remember what I like to say, if you respond better, I promise I'll preach better. All right, I promise that. I, wait, I don't like breaking promises, so I don't want to promise that fully. But I got to look into the camera, which is uh, something new, right? Uh, before all this hit that none of us planned, um, our schedules, our jobs, uh, just everything, our, the way we function in life kind of got shattered. And uh, shattered in probably at first, I think there was a little bit of a novelty to it. It's like, ooh, kids get off school for like three weeks. This is kind of cool. And it was different, right? Like, I got to stay home. I've never done that before. And so there was a novelty to when it all hit back in March, if you can remember five years ago, back in March, um, it, it was just kind of a little bit neat because none of us have lived through a pandemic, uh, but here we all are now living through one. And uh, listen, no matter what we feel about this thing, um, God's still on his throne and we can still worship him no matter what we're going through. And we got to do that. Uh, we have to do that. So I want to look in the camera. Welcome everyone watching on live, on Facebook Live. Wish you guys were here. Um, I promise you this, we'll be opening um, soon. I'll release that next week, by the way. Okay. Um, so I, I had to pray. I had to be prayed up before tonight. And one of the reasons is because I've just been frustrated I've been frustrated with Christians. I've been frustrated with God. I've been frustrated with COVID. Just been frustrated. But I want to represent Jesus well. No matter if I want to wear a mask, no matter if I think the church should have been opened months ago or not, I will tell you now in all my ministry years, this has been the toughest decisions I've ever had to make. Can I just say, you need to lift your staff up in prayer and not criticize on social media, not going around talking to other churches about what your church is doing. And I may be just preaching to the crowd right now and I'm sorry. I have to say that. Stop criticizing and start praising. You still have breath. Yes, our world was shocked upside down. Absolutely. Wow, we don't have the deaths and the cases like the CDC predicted when it first came into America. We're way under those numbers. I realize that. But God is still good and worthy of our praise, and we are still to be the aroma of Jesus Christ to this world. Whether we agree with governors or presidents or whoever, and I need to say this, this isn't even what I'm supposed to talk about tonight. All right? I told you I had to be prayed up before tonight because, yeah, I have strong opinions, very strong opinions, and I'm checking it with the Lord, so I, I need to get a heart check, right? A heart check. Um, I'm going to say one thing, and I'm done talking about COVID for the moment, but I finally have a crowd, to, and I have the mic, and you have ears, so I'm going to talk. Um, it is biblical to live under government authority. It's biblical. Jesus talks about it. Paul talks about it. I believe Peter talks about it. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. It's biblical to submit to authority, whether we agree or disagree. Because in the end, politics only changes policies, but Jesus changes hearts. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Thank you for the 50% of you that believe that, and the other 50% said, Pastor, you should have opened up a long time ago, right? All right, just be honest. We're all safe. How many of you, we should have opened up a long time ago? Just real. That's, cool. that's, that's awesome. See? How many of you are like, hey, Pastor, I'm behind you? 
other heathens, you were the ones that raised your hand first. No, I'm totally kidding. It's totally fine. 100%. Like, I get it, right? I have friends that are thinking, li- literally, friends in my circle that are pastors. Am I standing too close to this camera? Crew back there? Um, what does that mean? I am standing too close? Okay. Um, you know, I got pastors that are right now considering closing church for the entire rest of the year, 2020. Um, here's why. We won't do that, but I, slight, I get what they're trying to do. Wow, I am going totally off script tonight. Um, it's probably because I've been in the sun all afternoon. They're closing because we're really good at large gatherings across America, right? I mean, let's be honest. We do Sunday well in America. We get that. We get the large group gathering. What you see in the book of Acts when the early church launched is they did large group gathering and house group gathering. In America, we're horrible at house group gatherings. We're bad. We're bad at holding each other accountable in small groups. And to be honest, maybe perhaps in America, we have not done a good job being the hands and feet of Jesus and serving and loving our community the way we should have been all along. So a couple of my friends that are actually closing their doors until 2021 have decided we're going to get good at those two things. We're going to love on our community during this time. Like we've never, we're up in our game and we're up and up our small group ministry where people are meeting in homes, praying for one another, getting in God's word and holding each other accountable. I think that's great. Because if I'm honest here at Radiant Life, we're good at large group gatherings. We are trying so hard to get you guys more into life groups and do our small group ministries. We're trying to love on our community. But I think in church in a whole, we got to get better, the church in America, at small group gatherings and serving our community. Being the light of Jesus Christ to our community. We got to get better. We don't exist for us. We exist for the world to shine our light to them. We were never created to live in holy huddles. We were created to go out and impact our community for Jesus Christ. And if you don't think so, then we got to check our theology. Because last time I checked, heaven and hell are realities. And there are people dying that we know that will spend eternity in hell. We got to get a passion for lost people. We got a passion to go reach and save our neighbors and our coworkers. We got to get a passion for that. We got to get a heart that breaks after the things that breaks God's heart. We got to get there, church. We got to get there. All right. Off my soapbox. Thanks for listening. No amens to that one. All right. And I lost my place in the Bible. All right. I still love everyone. The Lord held things back that I wanted to say that I know. Okay, Lord, you win. I will not say those things. All right. Let me, let me read this. Philippians 4, chapter, chapter 4, uh, verse 10. Uh, Let me give you back up to Philippians. Paul is in prison. He wants to go to um, Rome to preach. Like he just wants to get to Rome, Italy. And uh, instead he finds himself in a prison in Rome, not preaching in Rome. So he's in prison and he writes to the church in Philippi. And we have the letter from Philippians chapter four. It reads this way. I rejoice greatly in the Lord. Nope, that's not it. Here we go. Four, four. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. Don't you love that? It's like, hey, church in Philippi, you didn't get it the first time. I say always, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, just in case you didn't get it the first time, you got to rejoice. I think some of us, we need to do some rejoicing around here. We got to do some rejoicing. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. How can Paul, who is locked up in prison, say, hey, rejoice in the Lord always? Again, I say rejoice. How can he say those words when he is in a prison cell? Feels like we've been in a prison cell. How can he praise God when his whole dream in Rome was to preach, but instead he finds himself in prison? I think it's all about our perspective. It's all about our perspective. We can view this perspective, the season that we're in right now, we can view it as a season of pain, season of loss, 
season of hardship. Just a horrible thing that we're going through, if we're honest. None of us woke up and thought March 8 would have been our last Sunday gathering. None of us. I remember I got home on March 7 from Orlando, Florida. Pastor Josh and I flew in from Orlando, Florida, March 7. March 8, Pastor Brandon spoke that Sunday. And I had no idea the next three days school's going to get canceled. And all of a sudden we're all staying at home now. Perspective. It's a season of pain. You know how you and I can look at the same thing but have a different perspective? You ever remember those things? I don't know what they're called. Those things that you're supposed to look at, like maybe cross-eyed or really close, and you pull it away and a 3D image was popping out at you? What was that called? No one knows. Magic eye. Thank you. Told you if you give me more feedback, I'm going to preach to you better. All right. Magic eye. Thank you. Someone knows. Magic eye, right? You can sit there and some of you, magic eye, you never even saw it. You're like, I don't believe you. There's nothing here. It's a 2D picture. That's all that thing is. Others of you know, like, no, I see dolphins. They're jumping out at me. I see a rainbow with a pot of gold at the end right there. And the other people are like, there's no way. I don't see it. It's all about perspective. I wonder if this season can't be marked perhaps by some of us as a season of anxiety and worry. But I think if we have a change of perspective, we can view this season as a perspective of a season of praise. I wonder if for some of us, we just need to wake up a little bit and say, it isn't about me, it's about God. Check this out. In Acts, let me show you the story. And then, I hope I have it right. Acts chapter 16. Um, Paul and Silas are going to go to the house, a place of prayer. But instead, there's a woman there that is making the people a lot of money. Um, and she's telling fortunes. And then Paul and Silas are like, I think she may have a demon. And they perform like an exorcism, if you will. They release the demon from the woman. And now everyone's mad because that was their money maker. That woman brought in money. So they're like, uh-uh, Paul and Silas, get out of here. And so they're going to uh, kind of drag them to the officials. And it says this, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. Bad day, right? That's, that's a bad day. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When they received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So here they are. They are severely flogged and beaten, probably black eyes, bloody nose, their backs hurt, right? And they're in the prison cell together. So what do they do? They complain? What do you think they did? They sit there and go, man, God, this season's horrible in life. You know, God, if you would have done this, I wouldn't have been here. And it's not fair. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing songs. A season of pain where they could have been complaining. Instead, they're praying and singing Songs to God. It's a perspective. They had a perspective of praise in a hard season. And look what happens. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaking. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up. And when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in and fell tumbling before Paul and Silas and brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. You and your household. Well, they are beaten, they are in jail together, horrible season of life. And instead of praising God for the what, which they obviously wanted to get out of there, they still wanted to preach the name of Jesus. Instead of praising God for the what, they praise God for the who. You are still good, God. 
Even in my season of pain, we are going to praise you for you, not what we're going through. I hope, I hope you get something out of tonight. I hope you'll understand that we will rejoice in the Lord always, and we'll say it again, rejoice no matter what our situation is. Let's praise through the storm. Let's praise him when the world fights against us. Let's praise him when you're in the waiting. Let's praise him when there's prosperity, and let's praise him when we're in pain. And we're not praising God for the what. We will always praise God for who he is. And then watch the provisions flow. So praise team, you guys are going to come back out. I'm supposed to give you a signal. There it is. If he breaks me out, praise him. And if he doesn't break me out and we're still in the waiting, praise him. We praise him not for the what, but for the who. And so we're going to close with this last song called Glorious Day. So if you don't know the lyrics, I'm going to give you a chance to Jump online all right now and grab the lyrics. You at home on the other side of this camera, you're lucky. The lyrics are at the bottom of the screen for you. Those that are live, don't watch Facebook because Facebook's like five second delay. So don't think you can get your lyrics that way. That's going to be no bueno. All right. But let's praise him for who he is. Not the what, but the who. Even in tough times. Because guess what? I'm going to guess all of us here are followers of Jesus. We can praise him because we're free and we're saved from our sins. No matter what happens in the next months to come, the rest of this year and the years to come, we will praise him because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you and for me. So let's stand to our feet. Let's worship together our last song, Glorious Day. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you
just give a round of a hand or whatever you say um, to the tech team that you guys don't see inside and these guys that have worked so hard. You know, back uh, March 8th, our last Sunday together, we didn't even have cameras like this. And uh, your faithful giving has bought what you see right now. And uh, if you go inside, you can kind of see a crew. There's four of them right now trying to... This was a whole different ball game that we had not had before. And we had to learn on the fly. And um, JB needs a very long vacation. I'm going to tell you that right now. So we will be auditioning for... No. Um... He does. I mean, this was all brand new stuff, and we had to figure out how. And uh, so when we get back together, just one thing. Is, um, one of the cool things is uh, back behind our worship center there, we call it the green room. There's a whole room back there. And uh, during this time, we had to take about a third of that room and build a wall and create a broadcast mixed room. Uh, because what goes out on these cameras and what you see on uh, on our Facebook and other things, it takes a different mix than what you guys would hear in the worship center through those speakers. It's completely different. And so we created a whole soundproof room, right? Is that the right way to say it? That uh, we will have guys out there. We built up our crow nests in our corners where that is camera C or B. That's camera B or C. That will be up there, so you'll see people operating cameras now because we will always live stream moving forward, and uh, that will be in my face. Well, it'll be back in the sound booth, but uh, get used to us welcoming everyone to church and those watching online. New language, new time, new time. Let me pray for you guys. Father God, thank you for tonight. Thank you that um, we can praise you no matter what. Uh, Maybe we have a perspective of not just pain, because pain's real. We don't want to ignore it. But God, may we have the true perspective of praise, no matter what we're going through, whether it's a high, whether it's a low, may we praise you. And we praise you not for the what, we praise you for the who. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, guys. God bless you. We'll see you next week.